right, so let's return to the Mr. and Mrs. Smith handshaking party problem. We remember that Mr. and Mrs. Smith invited four other couples to this party. And so that gives us a total of 10 people that are in the problem. Now, Mr. Smith asked each of these people, uh, or the nine other people, how many times that they shook hands with someone else. And so each person gave them different answers. What are these possible answers? If you're antisocial, you don't have to shake anyone's hands. And so, of course, the minimum number of times that you could shake someone's hands would be zero. And the maximum number of times that you could shake someone else's hands, you can't shake your own hand, so that leaves nine other people, and you can't shake your wife's hand, so it leaves a total of eight people that you can shake hands with. So we know that the minimum number of times that someone shake hands is zero, and the maximum number of times that they shake hands would be eight. So let's go ahead and visualize our problem. So we'll have Mr. Smith here. And we'll draw the nine other people around, uh, around Mr. Smith that are in the problem. And we'll label each individual associated with the number of times that they shook hands. Of course, we don't know who they are, but here is our antisocial person. This person shake hands once, twice, three times, and so on. Okay, so here is a visualization or model of our problem. We can use this to help determine what the answer might be. Our question again is, how many times did Mrs. Smith shake someone's hands? So let's look. This person here who shook eight other people's hands. Well, we know we didn't shake this person's hands because they're antisocial. So that leaves uh, the fact that it has to shake hands with everybody else in the room. So we'll draw an, a line connecting the number of times, or the people with whom this person shook hands. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So this person had to shake hands with these people. Now, let's continue this process. What about person number seven? Well, person number seven has already shaken hands once with uh, this person. So we look at uh, we know he can't shake hands with this person, and we know that he can't shake hands with this person because they've already shaken hands their maximum allotted of one time. So that means that person number seven has to shake hands with everybody else except for person zero and person one. So let's go ahead and draw that. So here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And as you can imagine, we're gonna continue this process. Person six had to shake hands with Mr. Smith and with person five and four and person three. Person five uh, had to shake hands with Mr. Smith and with person number four. And that's it. So now person number four is shaking hands with four people. Uh, number five is shaking hands with five people and so on. What can we tell from this bit of information. We know that uh, someone has not shaken hands with their wife, and so that's one of the rules. And so what that means is, since person number eight shook hands with everyone else except for this person, that means that this must be person number eight uh, is spouse. So number eight and person zero are married. And continuing this logic, we see that person number seven and person number one, they're also man and wife and six and two is a pair, and five and three have to be a pair. So therefore, we know by the process of elimination that Mr. Smith uh, and person number four is his wife, Mrs. Smith. So Mrs. Smith shook hands with four other people. Taking a model, taking a really weird sounding problem, but formulating it as a model, visualizing the problem, understanding what the uh, constraints are and the parameters of the model allow us to solve some pretty interesting problems.